Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, Moses Curious Days as the Cabinet Secretary for Investment, Trade and Industry in the Republic of Kenya are actually numbered. I, Moses Kerry Kuria, being appointed a Cabinet Secretary of Kenya, do swear that I will at all times be faithful to the Republic of Kenya, that I'll obey, respect, and uphold this Constitution of Kenya and all other laws of the Republic, that I'll be well and truly serve the people and the Republic of Kenya in the office of Cabinet Secretary that I undertake to hold my office as cabinet secretary with honor and dignity, that I'll be a true and faithful counselor to the president for the good management of the public affairs of the Republic of Kenya, that I will not diverge directly or indirectly such matters as shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my duties and committed to my secrecy, except as may be required for the due diligence of my duties as cabinet secretary, and that I will perform the functions of my office conscientiously and to the best of my ability. So help me God. It's just a matter of time before William Ruto will either move Moses Kuria to another ministry or he will kick him out of the cabinet altogether. Yesterday, the Daily Nation carried out a story, some interesting story. At first, I thought that the story was just because of the beef. Remember Moses Kuria's part with the media. I thought it was just that extension of that beef. But later on, it was confirmed. This is what the nation carried out because it's going to form the basis of this analysis. That U.S. official Catherine Tai refuses to meet C.S. Moses Kuria over foul mouth. Let me just briefly go, go through it. It says, the nasty public tirage and social media post of outspoken and unapologetic industrialization, trade and investment cabinet secretary Moses Kuria have landed him in trouble. This time, the nation has established that the visiting United States trade representative, Catherine Tai, cancelled two scheduled meetings with Mr. Korea to discuss the trade ties between the two countries. Now, according to this story, the United States trade representative was supposed to have two meetings with Moses Korea, but the meetings were actually cancelled. And it goes on, sources said Ms. Ms. Tai was to meet Korea on Monday at his Two Rivers office, but cancelled, labeling him an extremist over his unpalatable remarks against individuals and institutions. You see, if this is true, then it meant this lady actually left United States of America with a scheduled meeting with Moses Korea. She arrived in the country, then she realized that this is not going, not going to happen. Probably along the way, she got brief either from the um, embassy down here or someone somewhere might have influenced this. <clears throat> and she goes on, the story goes on. There's just a part I want us to read here. Ambassador Tai, who has been in the country from Monday to co-lead a meeting of U.S. East African Community Trade and Investment Framework Agreement, TIFA, Council, is reported to have expressed her reservations with the conduct of trade cabinet secretary. Mr. Kuria was supposed to attend the TIFA Council meeting alongside East African community and arid and semi-arid lands counterpart Rebecca Miano, but he was reportedly locked out. You see, we are talking of a cabinet secretary in the Republic of Kenya being locked out of the cabinet. Why? Because the American representative, who is ideally supposed to be very junior to Moses Kuria, said no, Moses Kuria is not meeting. And Moses Kuria was actually the convener of this meeting. That's why I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time and I'm going to explain why. It goes to add that the ambassador cancelled her planned engagement with Korea at his office. Today, which was yesterday, which was on Tuesday, he was blocked from the scheduled meeting with US official and CS Miano proceeded with the meeting. Disclosed multiple sources within government who spoke to the nation. The isolation of Mr. Korea comes at a time the U.S. is on a charm offensive in Africa and views Kenya 
as the East African Community Entry Hub and affirmed by US Ambassador Meg Whiteman as the next Silicon Valley. So basically, because of the American interest and entry in partnering with, with uh, Kenya, Moses Korea is not going to survive. So in this video, I want to explain to you guys why the ambassador literally refused to meet with Moses Korea and why Moses Korea's days in office as a cabinet secretary for trade are numbered. I'm talking of trade. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, guys, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive in. And by the way, I want to thank the following people for the coffee which I received. Thank you so much. You can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on your screen. Now, let us dive in. Why do you think the American representative cancelled this meeting? Because according to the story, which has been confirmed because actually on Tuesday, that same Tuesday, the representative confirmed that she actually snubbed Moses Korea. Why do you think that happened? Number one is the fall mouth. Moses Korea has just been talking. Nobody would want, any serious person would not want to associate with Moses Korea. Number two, I suspect that there are individuals in the Republic of Kenya or outside who petitioned the American representative not to meet with Moses Korea. Americans normally take the issue of petitions seriously. So probably there's a group of individuals who just wrote petitions to the embassy that they don't want this meeting. So the embassy then decided to do a background check and they notified the lady about some of these things. Because if Moses Kura is our minister for trade and you go to his Twitter, let me just see if I can get to the Twitter handle right now. <clears throat> and you go to his Twitter handle, Moses Kuria, just a minute, Moses Kuria, and you go to his Twitter handle, you will be shocked. Several things are happening here. You know, he's, he's posting very funny things. You you'd ex, you'd have expected, for example, the ambassador, I mean, this trade representative, to go to Moses Korea's Twitter handle, and then probably should get a few information about the ministry. That's not the thing. Moses Korea is posting very funny things on his Twitter handle. So probably someone somewhere petitioned. Number three, I also tend to think that the American intelligence system probably sold out Moses Korea. Because Moses Korea has been attacking the Kenyatta family of late. He's been uh, throwing insults left, right, and center. So probably they, they gave the lady. I, I suspect that what normally happens is that if this kind of officials arrive in the country, then the intelligence will brief them that the guy you are supposed to meet, this is the, this is the character. Then the lady said, for this, no. And I also tend to think that the American government could also be sending a message to William Ruto that we are not going to conduct business with you as long as this individual is here. There is a photo which, which William Ruto posted yesterday. It's actually also posted on, um, on a, there's a photo which Moses Corey, I mean, which William Ruto posted yesterday. In that photo, Ruto confirmed meeting with this lady, but Moses Korea was absent. What does that tell you? It tells you that the Americans are sending a coded message to William Ruto. But why do I strongly believe that Moses Korea is actually not going to survive in this ministry for long? Moses Korea, most people really don't take him seriously. But personally on this channel, I've always opined severally that Moses Korea understands real politics. You know, if you want to understand a typical politician, then that politician is Moses Korea. Just like Kanini Kega is also a, a, a typical politician. You know, if you look at Kanini Kega, he was firmly in Uru's corner because Uru's corner was in, was in power, <clears throat> very influential at that time. He ensured that he secured his position at the East African Legislative Assembly. Once he got that position, then he now used the position to negotiate with William Ruto. And right now, Kanini Kega probably is more closer to William Ruto than those other MPs who were elected in, on order ticket through, I mean, from the mountain. So those are politics. So Moses Korea normally understands politics. 
if you ask me. But it's going to lose on this. Why? Number one, the United States of America's influence is so huge. So huge. If you look at uh, the, the roles of uh, Ministry of Trade, uh, let me just check through my, my laptop. If you look at the Ministry of Trade and Investment, the first core function is to promote and facilitate domestic and foreign investment. Number two, it's also supposed to be investment policy and attraction. Number three, it's supposed to be industrial policy and planning. So which means this ministry is supposed to work very closely with the foreign partners. And U.S. governments are now keen on investment on investing in Africa. How will these objectives be achieved if the minister cannot attend some of these meetings? And because of that, I can assure you, if William Ruto were to do a reshuffle, one of them is Moses Korea. The U.S. government are going to influence him. They have actually sent him a current message. So they are telling him, we don't want this guy. So if you want anything from American, remove this guy. So that's number one. Number two, the impact of that snub by the U.S. representative. It might appear small, but it's so huge. I'm saying this because, you know, if you look at the way the, the, these uh, colonial, colonial partners operate, the U.S. government has a lot of say on them. Tomorrow, you will see the European Union refusing to meet with Moses Korea. Russia will meet with him, but the European Union might follow the American footstep. That's the moment Moses Korea will know that he has lost it. That's a fact. So the impact of that snub and the fact that the lady actually confirmed. Number three is Kenya Kwanzaa politics. And the truth of the matter is that who told you that all Kenya Kwanzaa senior politicians are happy that Moses Kuria is the cabinet secretary for trade and industry? How sure are you that Shigeri Gashagwa as a, as a deputy president is happy with Moses Kuria? Because that docket is huge. That's where people make deals. It creates opportunity for individuals to network internationally. Who is telling you that they are happy? Who is telling you that William Ruto's in a circle? The six individuals I mentioned in that original post are happy. Because just the other day, Moses Kuria almost created a friction between China and Kenya. I remember the minister, the, 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 the PS for Foreign Affairs had to write a letter to correct things. The other day, about Khartoum, he also weighed in. So people will take advantage of this and they'll go to William Ruto at night and tell him Mkubwa, wile tunaona ujama na ito Moses Korea itafanya hawa tu America watatuchukia. So, tufanya aje. I can assure you that's something which is happening. And number three, number four lastly, is that the role the, the cabinet secretary plays in signing deals. Who will be sending deals on behalf of Kenya? Trade deals with the American government. Who? Who? Tell me who. The person who will be selling those deals is Moses Korea. But these guys will not allow him. So who will be representing the ministry? Nobody. So if you ask me, Moses Korea amejikaranga. Ochielore emoe. Amejikaranga I don't know what you think. That's my take. Thank you guys. Until next time, have a good day.